Hello everyone, in this lesson we're going to talk about impulse. So first of all, let's see where it comes from. We know from grade 11 that Fnet is equal to MA. I then showed you how you can transform this equation into the following. Fnet is equal to change in momentum over change in time. Forgotten how we did that? Well, what we said was that A is equal to the change in velocity over change in time. That's its definition. So we can replace A with change in velocity over change in time. We know that change in velocity is equal to VF minus V initial. So I can change that to VF minus V initial over change in time. We can then multiply the MN and that's going to give you MVF minus MV initial over change in time. Then what we know here is that MV is equal to momentum and so that's momentum final minus momentum initial. So you, a short way of writing that is just to use a triangle P. And so that's how we got to this formula over here. That is Newton's second law in terms of momentum. Then if we had to take that equation, which I'm just going to write over here, and, mult and get the time to the left hand side, how would you do that? Well you would multiply by time. And so you'd end up with F net delta T equals to change in momentum. This expression here on your left, that is what we call impulse. So there are a few important things we can see here. Impulse, by definition, if we write out its definition, is literally the product of force and time. That is what, mo that is what impulse is. Another important thing to realize is that impulse is equal to the change in momentum. That is very important. Please just hear me out when I say that. Impulse is the same as the change in momentum of the object. So if you know what the change in momentum of the object is, then you can have its impulse. Or if you know the impulse, then you have the change in momentum. That is probably the most important thing you can take away from this lesson, is that impulse is the same as the change in momentum. So Kevin, how would this work in a actual question? Good question, let's get started. But first, I want to show you a quick little demonstration to illustrate the importance of impulse. Alright, so first of all, I apologize that I don't have this as full screen. I had a few problems trying to get the full screen to fit within my recorder. So all that you need to know is that the video you're about to see is two cars and they're doing a test on these two cars. So they do this in a factory and in the car in the top, well, the, the, the person in the top car, they don't have a seatbelt and they also don't have, this car also doesn't have airbags. In the second car at the bottom, it's got airbags and it's got a seatbelt. Please note that those are not real people, they are just crash test dummies. Okay, so let's see what happens. Remember the top car, no seatbelt, no airbags. Bottom car does have seatbelt and airbags. I'm going to play that once more. Okay, so now that you saw that, you can obviously see that the car at the top with no airbags and no seatbelt, that person's obviously going to suffer a much larger amount of force, or they're going to they're get a lot more injured. Now the reason for that is, it's a little bit interesting, well it's quite interesting, because if we look at both cars, we know that both cars, okay, so here's the top car, they're both traveling towards the right, and the people that do those crash tests, I think that one was done in Europe, they have to crash the cars at the same speed in order to get the same result or in order to compare them. So let's say they're both traveling at 50 kilometers per hour into that wall. Now what would the final velocity of both of those cars be? Well obviously they're both going to stop at zero, they're going to have a velocity of zero kilometers per hour. So both cars are going to undergo the same change in the velocity, okay? And so we know that F net, we've just learned that F net multiplied by delta T or change in time is equal to change in the momentum, right? We just looked at that a few minutes ago. And so we know that change in P 
is equal to mass times velocity final minus mass times velocity initial. So if these two cars have the same mass and they have the same final and initial velocity, then this part is going to be the same for both of them. So what that means then is that this part over here, which is called impulse, is also going to be the same for both cars. So then Kevin, what is the big difference? The difference is, is the driver at the top is going to experience a larger force, not a larger momentum, change of momentum, not a larger impulse, they're going to experience a larger force. How do we know that? Because if we had to take this formula that we now have, which I have here, and rearrange it, so that, oh no, let's actually use this one at the top, and let's rearrange it for force, well what you're going to end up with is F net equals to change in momentum over the change in time. So, which driver stopped or came to a stop first? Don't look at the car, look at the driver. Well, obviously the driver at the top who has no seat belt and no airbag, he's gonna, he or she would come to a stop first. But what the, what the bottom car does is it causes the driver to come to a stop over a longer time period due to the airbag which slows the person down, and the seatbelt, which slows them down. Both drivers are eventually going to be stopped, but the person who has an airbag as well as a seatbelt is going to become, or is going to get to a velocity of zero a lot slower. The cars are both going to become zero at pretty much the same time, but it's the driver that we're trying to protect, and that is why they have invented seatbelts and airbags. Okay, but Kevin, how does time do anything? How does that affect the physics? Like, good question. So, if this value becomes larger, then what that causes to happen is it causes F net to become smaller right? If you're dividing by a larger number, then it causes this number to become smaller. Or the other way around is if your time is very small, if you're dividing by a very small number, then it causes F net to become very large. And so that is what physics is all about when it comes to protecting drivers. They try to make the time as large as possible. They design the cars in such a way that the driver can reach a velocity of zero over a much longer period so that the F net or the force experienced by the driver is less because the lower the force that the driver experiences, the safer they will be or the less hurt they will or the less injury they will receive. Sure, I'm battling to get my sentences out today. So it's all about making the time as large as possible. Another example is if you have a person playing cricket and then you've got the person at the back of the, or behind the cricket player, we call it the wicket keeper, they need to catch the ball. Now if you've ever seen the way that a person catches a ball, whenever the ball hits their hands, they will cause their hands to move with the ball. Okay? They don't just hold their hands. For example, if we've got a ball over here, traveling to the left, and I'm going to do my best to draw someone's hands as if they're trying to catch the ball. Okay, so let's say this is someone's hands. When that ball hits the person's hands, they don't just keep the hands, their hands there. What they do is they draw their hands backwards towards their body. That is in order to increase the amount of time that the ball takes to slow down. Because if they can increase that time, then the force experienced by the ball, as well as on the person's hands, becomes less.